All right, check it out. Another Sci-Fi Express lane. And um, this is Jeff Carroll. I want to talk to you about the value of middle markets. For me as a, as a college agent, a former college agent, I want to talk to you about middle markets. Sci-Fi Express lane, Jeff Carroll, sci-fi writer, filmmaker, award-winning filmmakers, for award-winning sci-fi man, putting in that work. Um, and today I want to talk to you about like the middle markets. Um, when, and what I mean, the, so today's value is called the value of middle markets. And um, why do I say the value of middle markets? Well, because um, I, for 25 years of my life, was a college agent. And I got into the college agent work because I did not like the tough guy persona of dealing with club owners and promoters fighting over money and actually dealing with audience people but I didn't really worry about none of the people in the audience but it was really about you know dealing with the attitude of promoters and not wanting to pay you your money um, also on uh, uh, middle market was a preparatory market for the big market which is you know top television and and um, and film. Now, mind you, everybody can go to film. Everybody can go to television. But the grooming of it is in middle markets, like the minor leagues, like the G League, and um, in comic books and publishing. There's something very similar. So let me lay it out on how it goes down in the co in the um, comedy market first, because. I I think you'll understand it a little bit better, and then I'll go and explain how it is in the um, film, I mean, um, comic book, television, book, and film market, all right? So, with comics, before Deaf Comedy Jam, because I go back to comedy, I'll say I have to go back to like 87, you know, um, 87 when I was a student programmer at my college, president of the Black Student Union, um, I saw comedian Bill Bellamy performing at a step show in Rutgers. He was the host, a very funny guy. So I said, hey man, why don't you come do some comedy at my school? $300, he came and did it. After I graduated, I remember doing that. And I remembered that, you know, nobody else had done it. So I was like, man, maybe I could do this for other schools, you know, thinking black student unions. When I got an internship at CBS Records, which during the time that I worked there was in the transition of becoming Sony Music, all right? And um, I was uh, interning in the um, black music department and I was developing a black college radio uh, promotion for them for Sony Music. And um, it had me calling and sending music to radio stations and encouraging them to at least give the songs a try, putting them up on stuff that was um, coming out. And, you know, understanding the music market around the, the country wasn't exactly the same as it was in New York. And um, when I graduated, um, or when I finished the internship, I went to... Um, an entertainment agency, New York Entertainment, and um, they weren't interested in, um, I guess, bringing me in, but I don't think I didn't get hired. I think what really happened was, at the time I went to go work with New York Entertainment, um, I heard that they didn't pay all of their comedians, which was probably true, but probably just the comedian side of the story, and um, they had owed some comedians money. And me getting into booking, I didn't want to have that as a problem because these were all guys that were the same age as me. We are running the clubs together and I ain't got time to be hassled for money all the time. So um, I was encouraged to start my own agency. As an agency, I said that's when I didn't want to deal with club owners. I didn't want to deal with comedians like that. I didn't want to have no problems with my money, nothing. Because there's a lot of stuff you deal with in the club market. So, um, even when it's organized, it's ticket sales, it's not expected and not guaranteed money. 
So I found out about the college market and that was my saving grace. The college market was a bunch of things. It was restricted, you couldn't get wild, you couldn't get crazy. So the comedians that did it were able to talk to a broader stream of people. You didn't always have the pressure that if you didn't do good, they weren't gonna act savage. You know, some schools might have got wild. I know some black colleges got a little more energized, but what they gave you, you got back in love when it worked, you know? So they were really good. But it was a good test market and grooming market for a broad performance audience when you do get out in the in the world. Um, comedians learn how to tell jokes without depending on shock, either cursing or over the top outrageous stories. Some comedians never figured out figured that out, but a lot of comics did, and I and it prevented me from working with um, every comic. There were some comedians I just couldn't figure out. They couldn't get work, you know, because at, at the college market because they um, weren't clean. And or weren't able to do this, you know, they would freak out. I would book them in Wisconsin, and Wisconsin had their own run. And yo, know, that run was all white, they were so white out in Wisconsin that the kids used to touch dreads and be like, Oh my god, can I touch your hair? You know, you're in the white part of America when people ask to touch your hair, or they touch it without even asking. That's wilder. So, I'm booking Iowa, I'm booking. Um, um, Nebraska, I'm booking Kentucky, I'm booking Pennsylvania, and I'm not booking, booking Philly or Louisville, you know, or Detroit. I'm booking that part of Illinois, you know, that got the Klan, you know what I'm saying? That part of Indiana, yeah, which is all of Indiana, you know, except for Indianapolis. Like, black people are in cities. They're not all over. And this was in the 90s. So we might be a little bit more spread out now. But at the time that I'm booking, nah, that's all I had, right? And comedy also was um, the Apollo Theater. For the first three years after I graduated, it was get 15 minutes of clean material to be able to perform on Apollo, Amateur Night, or Star Search, and then you get noticed. Then came Deaf Comedy Jam, and Deaf Comedy Jam said, I'll take your Tracy Morgan and do you one better. I'm gonna give you Martin Lawrence, the dirty side. And neither one of those comedians could ever really perform on a regular on colleges. They would get one or two shows, but then the word would get out, they might be a little too colorful and too um, adult with their language, you know, and um, they, it would restrict them. But for the other comedians, man, the college market is what made Dave Chappelle. I know, I know, you know, you might think, oh, this guy's a black comic and he came through Deaf Comedy Jam, but Deaf Comedy Jam wasn't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and a lot of the people that came from Deaf Comedy Jam um, had to learn how to clean up their stand up. You know, um, fortunately, there became c cable television, HBO started doing stand up shows, but a lot of those comedians still had to learn how to clean themselves up because they're still limited to this day, you know, in terms of what they can do stand-up wise, you know what I'm saying? We got Netflix now, um, but you, if, you, if all you do is the, the, the P word pussy and dick jokes, you, it is what it is. You're gonna limit yourself, you know? So now, how does that translate to comic books? Uh, well, comic books has middle markets too. Comic book has middle markets the independent market, you know, and there's an independent market that is, oh, we need to do whatever we need to do to get a Kickstarter um, selling. My Kickstarters do regularly 10,000, 30,000, right? I had a guy come up to me in a comic book store and say, yeah, if it ain't got no titties on the, on the cover, you know, I'm not, you know, running to, I like my horror comics with titties, you know, and, and now what are we running into? We're running into a conservative a community. Where are you going to go? You know, Hara, just give you an example, like if you got used to writing those type of stories, your world is now getting smaller because we have a woke culture, 
we have an aware culture and those things are not as commercially viable as before. Love scenes are seen seen as gratuitous, right? Love scenes are of sex and all that is being dumbed down. And the, the actresses that are in it are being um, are complaining about it. It's almost pornographic in the way that we have to get the actresses to participate in these scenes. So that's how I think the the um, middle market really works. You know, it gives you the opportunity to hone your skills and create a reputation for uh, certain types of 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 comedy or I mean certain types of comic books, certain types of storytelling. And I think that's good. Um, and allows you to build up your own um, uh, your own image, you know? So, um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, there's a lot of things I like about the indie world. Um, the indie world allows you to build up your own, your market based on things that you, um, I guess would have trouble getting um, approval from if you were with a publisher. Dang, I never had this on the show before. Let's see. It's going to the uh, film festival. I'm, sorry. I'm going to the film festival. Yes, have you been here before? No. So, second floor parking. Okay. Uh, there's a stair well there and there's an elevator there. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. And it's free? Yes, it's free or you can give me a million dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Both of these open automatically when you're ready to leave. All right. Love your shirt. Enjoy. So, yeah, never really had that happen before, but I'm going to a film festival. So, I was driving to a film festival. Anyway, it's a um, horror film festival. So, anyway, yeah, I think that's the best thing. You know, I probably will be able to say more um, about this um, the next time we talk. You know, I'm... I'm doing things, working behind the scenes, and I'm seeing the value of, of this middle market in ways I never saw before because I'm a straight up and clean guy. So for me, um, asking me to do certain things, I've been working towards that all along. Um, but a lot of people muddy up the middle market. A lot of people pick up bad habits. A lot of people don't think about doing things, you know, like illustrators. They will um, work on an unprofessional schedule. They'll do books whenever they feel like it. They, you know, take forever to get it done. But when you get into the real market, yo, you got to get your book done. You got deadlines that's coming at. And if you don't have a habit of figuring out how to get out of your writer's block, your creator block, when it's time to deliver a product, yo, you're going to have a problem. And so that's probably the negative of, of the indie, the middle market. Um, and that's the same thing for film. If you pick up bad habits, the benefits of this, these, these independent markets for book publishing, comic books, and film is that they allow you to learn your voice right learn your angle learn your expression like for me i wrote in every subgenre of of science fiction that i could till i found out um what my thread was what my what we what was the common thread in all of my stories that my my weave thing didn't work that well and um dang, i'm sweating so um and that's it but i would just say yeah there's a value to the middle market just like comedians, if you don't um, allow yourself to stay focused on end goals, the freedom, that's what it is. It's the freedom will get to you. And um, when that funnel closes, only a few people are going to get through it that um, are, 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 are outside of the box. Other than that, come on now. That's Dave. He seems free, but he's picked up a language that is offensible when he wants it to be offensible. Some people can't say anything without being offensive because they were never in that circle um, before. All right, I'm out of here, going to this film festival. Talk to you later, Jeff Carroll, Sci-Fi Express Lane. Um, like, share, subscribe, 
and I'm always welcome to comments. Peace.